Hello drone racers, today we're going to kick off a brand new series called Quadcopter Basics. This is Quadcopter 101, so we need to cover some of the basics. A lot of people are finding this channel and are just getting started. So we're going to cover each component in detail as best as I can. Today, to kick off the series, we're going to cover the major components of a quadcopter and we're going to use this, which is actually the first quadcopter I ever built. I haven't flown it in about a year. It has a couple of issues and just haven't had time to spend on it, but it works really well to be able to show all of the individual components of a quadcopter because this is three years old at this point. And to start out with, the point I want to make about this is I still consider this the first quadcopter I ever built. But one of the things you have to keep in mind about quadcopters is you're going to change things. And even though this is the first one I ever built, it actually only includes one component from that original build. And that is these ESCs. I got this as part of a kit and it came with the frame and the transmitter and the receiver and the motors and the VTX and all, all everything we're gonna look at here, except I have changed every single component on it except for these original four ESCs, but I still call it the original build. But so what we're gonna look at is the components as we go through and we're gonna start with the battery connector. We'll actually have a series on even the battery connectors, but this is an XT60 connector. This was originally a Dean's connector, which is an older type of connector but the battery connects in to this part. So here is the battery itself. This is, you can tell it's an old one. If you're flying now, you'll look at this and say, 25C, how is it possible to fly on that? But this is what I flew on for a long time. This is a 3S 1500 battery. Now, all of these things might not make sense to you today. What that means, what does 3S mean? We'll cover that in a future video. The flow of one component to another starts with, in this case, the battery, and we connect up the power to the power cell here. From here, the power goes through these wires, and man, looking at this again, these are teeny tiny wires, and I will take this off so you can see how it goes. So there, before we get to where the power goes, first let's look at the base of everything. Uh, this is the frame. So the frame includes the structural components that everything mounts to. It's generally very straightforward and obvious what this is. This is an X frame because everything is pretty much a straight X. We'll cover different frame types as we go on. So there's H frames and stretch X frames, but this is an X frame. It's just a straight, pretty much a true X. This frame is made of plastic. It's just a composite plastic. And for all the talk about how great carbon fiber is, I have never broken any of these frames. And it is covered in mud. For I have bailed this thing so hard. I've never broken this, which this is fiberglass. I mean, look at this. Look how flimsy that is. Never broken. And this one has probably more flights and crashes than all of the other devices you've seen on the channel combined. So this is a frame, it's a two pieces. This is what we would call a long frame or this a, a component on here that gives you lots of mounting room. It's really huge and spacious compared to a lot of what we have, kind of close to what you see as a Martian um, or an alien frame. Now I have the power and it is connected to these these ridiculously small wires <laughs> looking at them now my power distribution board is these two components that's it so the, it's wired in here it's soldered to a piece of copper and there are barrel connectors in here that just plug in to these slots this was as advanced as a power distribution board as I had at the time. So this provides 12 volts. This only supported 3S. I couldn't support 4S because the components couldn't take it. At least some of them couldn't. Then each of these connectors went to each of the four ESCs. Get a good one that you can see here. There's, there, there's a good one that you can see. These are 12 amp ESCs. And if you look really closely, you'll see these are actually rated for 4S. So 12 amps, I heard somebody say the other day, it's like, oh, it's only a 30 amp ESC, that can't support 4S. No, these 12 amp ESCs used to support 4S. Now, we were not running ridiculous props at the time like we are now. The pull wasn't nearly what it was. Voltage wise, 12 amps is enough for a 4S battery. But so now we've got power going through the connector to the power, distribu power distribution board to the ESC. So that is how we powered the ESC. It just powered it straight off of the battery, essentially. Then from here, there are the three wires that you see. On mine, I run them underneath and they connect with barrel connectors 
to run to the motor. So the ESC is the part that th tells the motor how it should handle. The motor is obviously the part that spins your prop. Um, we'll cover more detail, but these are brushless motors, meaning there's no brushes to wear out on a motor like we used to have on the uh, older designs 30 years ago when I was racing RC cars. So it provides power through each of the, one of these connectors at a time, and that is timed with the motor to make it spin the way you want it to. The ESC is told what to do, and it has a connector here, connector wire, where I've got three wires here, and it connects through to my flight controller. This flight controller is an old Naze 32. This is a revision five, I think. Yeah, this is a Rev 5. It has four connectors here, and it is being powered by the ESC. The ESC, because it's receiving 12 volts from the battery, the ESC provides five volts to the flight controller. It's not being powered in any other way. It's not connected to the battery connector. There's not a, another power distribution board that's converting 12 volts to five volts to power this. It's just coming straight from the BEC. So you'll hear about a BEC, a battery eliminator circuit in the ESC. Here you can see BEC, half an amp linear. So it will uh, provide that back to the flight controller. So the flight controller here is what tells the ESCs what to do. It takes the input out of its gyro, it takes the gyro inputs, and then it takes the input from the receiver to then tell the ESCs how to turn each motor. So the gyro knows what angle it's at. So if it's leaning forward and it's trying to maintain level, it knows which of these ports are plugged into the front ESCs and it will tell those to spin a little faster than the back until it achieves level flight. Now this is all in angle mode. This flight controller does support all the uh, standard three modes that you are used to, the angle mode, horizon mode, and acro mode. As far as soft mounting, I've just got this mounted on a piece of foam, which is in the frame here, so it's not hard mounted. I do have it soft mounted, just with double stick tape on a piece of foam. So the inputs that you give to this controller have to come from somewhere, and they come from your receiver. Now, this is a PWM connected receiver. SBUS was not a good option for this at the time. There's ways you can get it connected, but for right now, this is the old fashioned way where I have one connector for every channel. So this connector comes on, it's not PPM, it's not SBUS. I have one connector on every port here. So each channel is controlled independently from the receiver. The receiver has a pair of antenna on it with my XAR, which is humongous compared to what we're flying now. And this is a telemetry sensor. So now if you're looking, you'll hear about telemetry on the flight controller where you're feeding that back to the radio. Well, this is how it used to happen. This is a LiPo voltage sensor where the LiPo battery connects on here and it would feed that data into the receiver, which would then use the telemetry in it to feed it back to the radio. So this is how I knew what voltage I was in. Actually, this part I can show you. It did that by connecting to the balance connector here. So if I connect it, don't plug it in backwards, that slides right on there and it will actually show you on screen here the voltage of this battery and it's able to, through the telemetry port, feed that back to the radio. Trust me, this was high-tech stuff at the time. So this covers all of the individual flight components of a quadcopter. We have the battery, we have the power distribution board, we have the flight controller, the ESCs, and the motors and the radio receiver with the added bonus of voltage telemetry. And so this is enough that it could fly all by itself. Just connect this up, mount the battery, you're good to go, that will fly. But this is an FPV racer, so we need some more components. Those I've individually mounted on the upper frame. So what would happen here is the battery would connect in, we saw where the battery went, and then the balance lead would connect up to a separate port that I had here. I don't think anybody does this this way anymore. And it would connect in here, and this did two things. I've got the two outside wires where when you take a balance lead and you take just the outside connections, it will provide full voltage. So taking those will provide 12 volts and that runs to a JST connector, which then connects through here and is spliced to go two places. One to my camera and also then to my video transmitter. So I think the camera is pretty self-explanatory. This is a board camera that we were using before the 
HS1177 form factor became popular, but this is a 12 volt only camera, which is one of the main reasons I consider this a 3S only flyer. If I plugged in a 4S battery to this, this would just fry and explode. This was mounted very sturdily in the frame by sliding it in place here and kind of just wedging it that way. There we go. There it gave me, it actually goes back a little further. There, it gave me my angle, which is not very aggressive compared to where we're at now. And then it, but it does hold surprisingly well in place. It didn't come out all that often, except in a hard crash. So the other place it wires back to is to the VTX. So the VTX is the component that transmits video to your goggles. This transmits on the 5.8 gigahertz analog frequency. So it connects and receives the video input, which comes through a separate wire from the transmitter, goes through here, connects in, it's gonna be the yellow wire that you see here, and then it connects out and transmits through the antenna. So this is a circularly polarized antenna created by IB Crazy, which until very recently is the way all of these antennas worked. The other portion of the wire here, you'll see that's connected with the center wires and all four of them that split, connected to this balance lead, which was connected to the voltage sensor that we were looking at. So it was permanently mounted in here, permanently connected. Whenever I would go to fly, I would connect this to that port and then connect the battery, both of them separately to make it work. Those are all the components that would go in the air, combining the two pieces and screwing them back together adding a battery and connecting it up gives you everything that you need, all the individual components combined together to fly a quadcopter. But as a preview for an upcoming build video, this is a Racer Star F330 amp 4-in-1 combo unit. So this one component here, which weighs practically nothing, it's very small. So this one component replaces the flight controller, the ESCs, and the power distribution board. So now the batteries will connect to this unit itself. It will distribute the power to the flight controller, to the ESCs. So all you need now is this and the motors that will connect in. I've got some uh, just racer star motors here and the frame. And even for comparison, here's the old camera and here's the new one. So that's how much things have changed. Very soon we'll get to a build video that includes all the fancy new small components. But for now we've got one other side because even though this includes everything that flies, we still have the pilot on the ground. So since we've got nostalgia going, these are the goggles that I used with this at the time. These are teeny tiny with a tiny little screen. The <laughs> These actually had to be super glued together and the screen has a adjustable lens here, but it's held on just with cardboard and you might even be able to see the glue where I had to glue the screen onto a piece of cardboard. It connects in with a receiver. So the receiver has an antenna that matches the one on the other side. This antenna though is inside of a case, but it's still a similarly designed circularly polarized antenna. The receiver receives the 5.8 gigahertz channel and then it feeds that output into the screen on this side so you can look and wear the goggles. So that's how you see what's being transmitted. And then last but certainly not least is the radio transmitter. This is what lets you input all of the controls to the quadcopter. Quadcopters, the radios can range from four channels to 100 channels, or in this case, 16? Yeah, 16 I think, more than I need. Each of the switches can be programmed to do different things. So in this case, I would set a switch to arm the quadcopter to enable it to be ready to fly. And then the flight modes that I talked about are on a different switch. And then the buzzer that's connected to it that I didn't show. I forgot to show the buzzer. Where's my buzzer? Oh yeah, I had to steal it for another model. The buzzer is the component that buzzes when you lose the model. And I set that on another switch, so if I can't find it, I can turn that on and it will uh, start beeping at me very loudly so you can find it whenever you lose it. So this was just the very first video in this series. Hopefully somebody found it interesting to see what the models used to look like. Just a few years ago, things have changed a lot. Over time, I'm gonna be covering each one of the components in the quadcopter. So we'll talk about pros and cons of different options and details. I'll cover things like what does 3S mean? What's that S stand for? And PPM, PWM, SBUS, what the heck is the difference in those and why do I care? Do we really need brushless motors? 
why don't we just keep using brushed? But hopefully you found this useful. And if you did, leave a like down below and comment with which components you want me to cover in what order and any specific questions that you have for the components that you want me to cover for them so I make sure I don't miss anything. Like props. I forgot to talk about props. These are trop, these are five inch props and we'll, they're what actually make you get in the air. These are 50-40 props. What the heck does that mean? So we'll cover that. So until next time, remember, while I review a lot of binding flies, there is something thrilling about flying something that you put together yourself.